how to import alembic geometry cache with C++ in Unreal because sometimes FBX are not enough, so let's get to it. But before we start, today's video is going to reuse some code we wrote in the video 3 of the series, so I strongly recommend to go see that one, but if you don't want to, here is the code. And as usual, here we are in a completely empty header file except the function we're gonna code today and also a little forward declaration right here at the top for the U geometry cache because I want to be able to return the geometry cache at the end of the function once I imported it. So here I have my little function, the import the geometry cache function. In there, it's going to be super simple. You just have to provide the path of the file you want to import and also where you want to save the geometry cache in your project. So the source path and the destination path and that's it. As output, the function is going to return you the geometry cache that was just imported and that's about it actually now it's time to jump in the cpp and as usual we're going to start with the includes and today the first include is going to be the code of the video tree of the series to be able to create and process an import task but other than that we have to configure the import task before processing it and the way we're going to do that is by going through the import factory so the import factory in this case is going to be the alembic import factory so that's going to be one of the includes we need we also need the geometry cache include because we want to process a geometry cache so we need to know what we're working with and then we have all the settings that we're going to provide to the alembic import factory so the abc import the settings right here and these three includes are in three different modules so we have the geometry cache the alembic importer and the alembic library module the alembic importer is only usable in the editor so obviously this function is not going to work in package game but we still have to make sure to include all these three modules in the build.cs file otherwise it's not going to compile so i'm gonna go in there and i don't think we have them actually i don't have have any alembic or geometry cache anything in there so i'm just going to add them i'm gonna start by my geometry cache right here my alembic library right here and all the way at the bottom i'm going to add the alembic importer the order doesn't matter at all you can place it anywhere you want but in my case i like to separate the modules that are usable in package game from the ones that are usable in the editor only so good now we're done with the includes and the build.cs file so we can go back in the cpp and start working on the logic and actually the logic today is going to be super simple we just have to configure the import and then process it and and that's something we already did before so it's not going to take too much time and the first step is simply to create the factory we're going to use to process the import so in this case it's going to be the u alembic import factory so we're simply going to create a new object of that type it's going to give us a little factory that we're going to use for that import and that's about it now we just have to configure it and actually to configure that one there's a lot of settings because if you import an alembic in unreal directly by drag and dropping it in the content browser you're going to see that in the import window there's a lot a lot a lot of settings and we're going to add all those settings in the code right now obviously you don't have to add all of them because actually for most of them i'm just using the default values because that's good enough for my import today but obviously you can modify those settings depending on the way you want to process your import for your project so we have the little factory right here and to configure the factory it's actually super simple you just have to set the settings that are already inside the factory so in the factory you have the import settings and then inside that the import settings variable you can configure everything everything's in there and the first setting that we're going to configure is actually the import type because it's going to define what type of import we're going to do and in my case I want to do a geometry cache the import type can be multiple things it can be the geometry cache the static mesh or the skeletal mesh in my case I want to make sure to return a geometry cache at the end so I'm going to use a geometry cache import so it's going to affect your output but it's also going to affect which setting you need to provide to the function because some settings only affect a specific import type so in my case I'm going to do a geometry cache import type so I'm just going to set all those settings right here these are all all the settings that affect the geometry cache type of import so inside the geometry cache setting structure you have all those settings right here i'm not going to read them all to you today you can just read them yourself and actually most of the values that we're going to set today are just set by default so these are pretty much all the default values i think i changed the flattened tracks to be false instead of true but that doesn't really matter you can set all the settings you want for your specific needs so these are my settings for my geometry cache import but in the case that i didn't want to do a geometry cache import but a static mesh instead i will just have needed to set these three settings instead of all those ones and same thing for skeletal mesh if you want to process it as a skeletal mesh instead you're just going to have to set all those settings right here you can ignore those and those you just have to set the skeletal mesh settings in my case i'm writing them all to show them to you but you just have to provide the settings that you're interested in so either the geometry cache the static mesh or the skeletal mesh the other ones are going to be ignored by the function anyway which means that in my case all those settings right here are going to be ignored but that's fine with me so good 
that was for all the import type specific settings but then we have all the other settings that are going to affect any type of import so i'm just going to scroll down because we have a lot of those so i'm going to scroll all the way down right here and the first batch of settings are going to be these sampling settings so how are you going to sample your frames during the import so what is the frame step how many frames there are in your alembic and everything so this is the sampling setting and then we have the normal setting so do you want to recompute the normals of your mesh or simply use the normals that are already in the alembic so all the normal generation settings are inside that structure right here and then we have all the material settings so all the settings that are going to affect the materials during the import in my case i don't have any materials in my alembic so i'm simply going to set them both to false to simply ignore the materials and i don't really care about them anyways but if you have materials in there obviously you probably want to import them also and the last batch of settings that we want is the conversion setting if you want to modify the size or the rotation of your geometry cache that's going to be in there right here and in my case my geometry cache is super 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 small so i'm going to scale it by a thousand so i'm going to make it super big that way we're gonna see something in the editor otherwise it was pretty 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 small so okay that was all the settings that we needed to set actually now we just have to process the import task so i'm just going to scroll down a little bit more to do that and it's actually going to be super simple since we already did the code in the video three of the series so we're simply going to reuse those functions so the first step is going to be to create the import task so we just have to provide the path of the file we want to import where we want to save it in the project and also the factory to use for that import task that function is simply going to create the import task and return it to us right here and and if it didn't work well i'm just going to return right away because i'm not going to be able to process the task because the task is not valid so if the task is not valid just return but if it's valid then we can process it and to process it is super simple we just have to also call a function that we also created in the previous video so the process import task that function is super straightforward you just have to provide it the task that you want to process it's going to process it and return you the object that was created by that task in my case it's going to be a geometry cache since my import type is set to geometry cache so here I'm just going to cast it to a geometry cache set it into a little variable that I can then return to the user if it was a success so the user knows that hey we imported a geometry cache but just before that if it was not a success if it failed I'm just going to return right away it's going to give a little more information to the user to tell him that it failed because that's part of the features that are inside the process import task function but otherwise I can simply assume that everything was a success I was able to process the geometry cache and I was able to import it and I can simply return it to the user at the end to tell him this is the geometry cache that you just imported so good that's about it for the c++ now it's time to jump in unreal to see if it works so here i am in unreal in a relatively empty level and i have a little user interface that we're going to use to trigger the function the user interface super simple you just have to write right here the path of the geometry cache that you want to import and also the path where you want to save the imported geometry cache in your project and when you click on the import button it's simply going to call the function we created today so the imported geometry cache providing it the source and destination path and that's it as simple as that so let's see if it works i'm just going to run my editor utility widget it's going to open my little window right here and when i click on import it should process my geometry cache it takes a bit of time because it's a pretty big geometry cache actually no it's super small but it takes still a little bit of time because there's a few frames in there and here it is now the process is complete i have my geometry cache and i can place it in my level here it is i have my nice little cubes with some waves on it that's awesome i didn't make that cube actually i downloaded it somewhere so i'm just going to add the link to the description if you want to have this cube for your test so i'm going to provide the link of where i downloaded that little cube but hey we can see that it was imported successfully i have my geometry cache right here and the reason why i took that cube it's simply because it's animated and it's pretty awesome so if i press play right here we can see that a hey, my mesh is animated and that's something you can only do with a geometry cache you cannot do that with an fpx file so good that's gonna be it for today's video and i'm gonna see you in the next one bye bye